Hello, I'm Richard Bertinet. Welcome to Gozne. Today, I'm going to show you how to make my apple flat bread. From this in here, beautiful dough, apple caramelized on top with some creme fraiche to this one. It's the same, but some black pudding on top. So from dessert to starter. <music> First, we'll make the dough. I got some water in here, 720. Flour in the bowl. And a fresh yeast in here. About four or five minutes on slow speed. Then we're going to medium speed. And then we add the salt about two minutes before the end of mixing. The dough will be nice and supple and elastic. So we got this mixer, of course, but you can do it by hand. There's plenty of technique. So don't be scared about the big machinery. There's much more simpler way of making dough also. So that's nice and mixed together now. I'm going to put the speed up. About five minutes, I will add my salt, and then we should have a nice, strong, and supple dough. That's the boring part now, waiting. So we've been on the medium speed for about five minutes, so I'm going to put the salt in now. Sea salt, of course, and the dough is going to get together even faster now. About two minutes, it'll be ready. So we're nearly there now. You can see the bowl getting clean at the bottom now. All the dough is together. It's a nice noise of the air going through the dough, making light, supple, smell delicious already. So we're done. Nice and strong, beautiful dough. We'll put it to rest now. Okay, so let's finish that dough up now. Look at this. Beautiful. So use a scraper to take your dough out, it's much easier. So this dough now might be, look a bit sticky for some, but when you put your dough to rest, you've got to shape it first. So use your scraper, put the dough together, and just give you a few turns by hand like this. So straight away you get a nice skin forming, that non-stick side. Tuck it in, and the dough looks beautiful. Tiny bit of flour. If you look closely, you can see all the air pockets. Nice and bouncy, delicious. It's good. So you can put it in one big bowl. I got two little bowl. So I'm gonna cut my dough in half. You can see your dough in here. There's a sticky side in here. So cover it with your non-stick side and tuck it back. And same in here. That's your sticky side. Non-stick side is on top. Fold it over and tuck it in. Little flour. Leave the dough to rest now for two or three hours. Overnight is even better. So just cover the dough and we'll leave it rest. So I've let the dough rest for about four hours on this one. Very slow rise. Now we're going to divide the dough and then let it rest on the tray again for a longer period of time or overnight. So you can see the dough, it's moved nice and slow and beautiful. So I'm going to divide the dough in about 180, 200 gram pieces. Similar on the tray. Very little flour on the top in here, so my top will go down onto the table. And then let's divide. It's, I'm looking for about 180, 200 gram each. Don't have to go bigger than that. And I'm sure to shape them also. So I've done a one kilo mix in here, but of course you can just do a 500 gram flour base. The good thing with the dough, you can always freeze it. So you can make a lot of dough, freeze a pellet of dough and use it whenever you need. And I'm going to shape them into a little bowl and let them rest in similar. So the way I do this, put my thumb on the middle of the dough and fold the dough over my thumb, just like this. So my top is back on top now. Non stick. We have similar and on a tray. Nice and simple. And the last one. So, the beauty with this dough is very flexible. You can make flatbread, you can make pizza with it, you can freeze it, you can leave it just rest overnight. It's super flexible. So that's my dough now. You can leave it ambient now for a good hour and put it in the fridge overnight and it'll be even better tomorrow. Give time to the dough to develop flavor and we'll see what happens. So I use a cloth on it, but of course you can use a big plastic bag or just a lid to keep it draft free if it's possible. Okay, so now we have a look at the dough, what it looked like after four hours. So 
you're looking here, you know, with four hours, if you do it nice and light and supple, and you can see all the air pocket inside. It's very nice. I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite flat bread. What I love about this one, it can be a pudding or it can be a starter. It's using apple, a bit of creme fraiche, and some black pudding. If you make it just with the apple, you end up with a beautiful pudding. If you add the black pudding with it, then you end up with a starter. Very flexible, but very, very tasty. First thing I'm going to do is use some nice eating apple and slice them very thinly with the mandolin. So watch your fingers on this one. But you want some thin slice of apple like that. So they cook very quickly. And now I'm going to put the flatbread together. Get my dough in here, a bit of similar on my table, and just push it down and stretch it. You don't have to be round, it can be nice and oval. Just like this, look at this, beautiful dough. Creme fraiche, nice thick creme fraiche. Don't put too much, tiny bit of brown sugar, just a bit, give you a bit of sweetness, and then we can put our apple on top. So you could put more brown sugar and tiny bit of butter and bake it like that. But the beauty of this is black pudding. Don't be put off, try it. Delicious. And just a few dollops of butter. There we go. Straight in the oven. We bake about 450. Look at this, that crust. So the way you can finish this off, you can flame some cavados on top, very nice, or some spicy honey or something like that, delicious with this. Okay, so that's my black pudding version. I'm gonna make a plain one just with apple and creme fraiche and sugar, so we can see what the difference is. Then my dough again, stretch it out. Beautiful to work with. Again, some creme fraiche. A bit of brown sugar, place our apple on the top, add a bit of butter, have a pinch of cinnamon, a bit more sugar, and that's all. If you could smell this. Delicious. Listen to that crust. Very light. And you got the smell of the apple, the creme fraiche, and the sugar with it. Perfect. So the proof is in the pudding. The best part of baking, of course, is eating. So I can't eat all this by myself. Are you hungry? So first, we're going to try the pudding version. Cheers. You're very messy. Mm. Oh Thank you. That's really good. Yeah? Really, really good. It's the same, but with a bit of black pudding on top. I've never had black pudding and I've always been scared to eat it, but I feel like if Rich Burton no, is okay. sharing black pudding with me, then I have to give it a crack. See the texture there, yeah? And you go try yeah, this. Yeah, thank you. Oh, goodness gracious me. It's so lovely. Mm. Wow. It's nice, isn't it? That's really nice. With the apple and creme mm. fraiche, it mm. was very it goes nice. so well Yeah, together. that's really good. 10, 10. I rate it. Rate it? <laughs> Absolutely. Rate it. Right, when this lot is eating, or try to... <laughs> <laughs> Not Somehow. spill it everywhere. <laughs> you can find the recipe on ghostnet.com, so I hope you give it a try and don't be scared of black pudding. And then can we get for the recipe, go to ghostnet.com. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, I said. Don't worry. You keep eating. <laughs> <laughs>